I wonder if the first question that I have for you is one that you ever ask yourself, and that is, did you set out to create a beauty empire? No. <laughs> um, no, it was, a, it was a thought. I mean, I remember when Robert, Robert Duffy, who's, who is my business partner, um, he said to me, you know, oh, there's this meeting with Sephora, they're interested in doing um, makeup. And I, I, my reaction was like, really? You know, like, okay. Uh, it, felt, it felt like so surprising to me that, that, that we would have that opportunity. And, and from the beginning, it was really very exciting, but I was really surprised. How do you think about beauty in the overall context of your business? Well, now, I mean, I kind of, I reference it all the time. In fact, there isn't, there isn't a day of the week where we're having a meeting with somebody in another area where I'm using Kendo and the people at Sephora as an example, because working with them has been really a joy. And maybe that we started with nothing and we created it from scratch, so there was no baggage, you know? But, but it really shows when you have a passionate team who know about formula, who know about communication, who are interested in what you have to say and respectful of what you have to say, and very excited by change and newness and, um, you know, what the results can be, you know, what possibilities you, you have when everybody is on the same page and, like, really, you know, working very hard to make all that happen. So you're really, you're, you're mark driven rather than market driven. Yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I love it when they, they, they usually start out the meetings with me by presenting the good news. And again, they're one of the, the beauty people are one of the, the rare people or the rare group that I sit with that is like, this is the good news and it's all good news. You know? So, so it's, it's been, uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm mark driven more than market driven, but it's very nice that they come with a market uh, a situation that's very favorable, at least so far. And how do you approach product development? Well, I think, you know, there's, there's, there's two sides because they know the business. So they tell me what, you know, they, what, what a line needs or what we need or what would be interesting for us to approach or, or create. And then sometimes I have thoughts or ideas about things I'd like to see. So it's really been, I mean, again, I think what's so successful and what's worked out really well for me and in terms of the business is that it is a dialogue and we do communicate with each other. And, you know, again, there's the creative problem solving, but then there's just the pure creativity. So it works both ways. And how do you define beauty? What does beauty mean to you? Well, that's very difficult to define. I mean, I think we're also, it's, we're in a time now where there isn't an answer. It's like there's many answers and that's what's great is um, I know through the engagement that I have with some people on Instagram, et cetera, or seeing the makeup artists or listening to, you know, the response of certain influencers, et cetera, that, you know, makeup is for people who enjoy creating their identities and it isn't based on that, like I need to conform to somebody else's standard of beauty. So it's a very exciting time, I think, in terms of, you know, the openness and the idea of, like, again, possibility of what beauty can be. It's like, it's a palette of stuff that you can use to be and make and say whatever you want, you know? There isn't a rule. Do you think that that em embracing of individuality is something that has evolved in the five years since you've launched the brand? I mean, I think in many ways you've been a key driver of it. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, again, I, for me, like, some of these, this, this, conversation is a bit instinctive. I mean, we, we've we worked with different people and different ages, et cetera, and it's never been about working with different types of people or different ages or anything like that. It's just about whoever, you know, you feel like kind of inspired by or who, you know, who maybe is part of your creative process at a particular moment. So everything, again, seems right and possible, which I think, you know, maybe that's different. I, I don't really know how it works in other companies or other beauty businesses, et cetera. But I feel like we're not really, you know, it is, it is instinctive and it's kind of so open and so free. And I mean, we've had everyone from Milk, from RuPaul's Drag Race, you know, doing something in London with us. And we've had, you know, Jessica Lang or Kaya Gerber. I mean, we've just been like kind of all over the place in, in a good way. Whereas perhaps in the past, being all over the place was not the way you wanted to be. And know? how do you approach choosing a face of the brand? 
again, it's, it's instinct. I mean, I, I work with uh, Katie Grant, a stylist who I've worked with for many years, collaborating on shows. And, you know, sometimes I'll have an idea, sometimes she'll have an idea, sometimes we both have an idea. Um, but it, it's kind of, like I said, it's, it's either instinctive or it's a whim or it may be some she, he, maybe somebody that we're currently inspired by, you know, mm -hmm. so there's no rule. And you, you referenced social media a minute ago. Um, you have a very strong and engaged social following. You have over a million followers. And I'm curious about how you think about it first as a business driver and whether, do you approach it more as a business driver or more from a personal point of view? Well, I mean, our company has an Instagram, but I mean, I, I was kind of late to the whole Instagram social media thing. I mean, I was very adamant. I, I mean, I was really against it for a while. And then one morning, I kind of, in my typical arbitrary fashion, said, like, I think I'm going to join Instagram today. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so. And then you got engaged on Instagram. Yeah, and then I just, everything's on Instagram. But, and now I'm addicted to Instagram. But, um, no, I think, it, you know, it's like my experience with it has been, you know, really fun, and I've enjoyed it, and I've reached, or I've, I've, reconnected with people. I've also started following people that I didn't know before who I like the content and the creative choices that they make. So I mean, I've learned things from it. I, sometimes I just like it to waste time on. I'm not really <laughs> sure how it, how, you know, I, I always joke in the office and say like, oh, well, you know, I, I post something and then someone says, oh, I love that. I need, want, need, want, need, want. And I was like, the cash register hasn't been ringing, but I know that everybody wants it, oh, you know, or needs it. So I'm not really sure how much impact it has, although, again, I think, I guess it, it just depends. I mean, I don't know how much my personal Instagram has. Is there anything that you wouldn't share? Hmm? Is there anything that you wouldn't share? No, no. I, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm pretty open book. Um, do you? <laughs> I am. <laughs> have been. <laughs> Still am. And do you feel like culturally that this is the direction that the zeitgeist is moving in? Where do you think, like, how do you see um, the age of individuality continuing and evolving? Well, I just think, I think, you know, I mean, it, it, there's just no denying how, how, what a reach that social media has and how it does allow so many more people to be engaged Within a, in a dialogue or a conversation or exchanging of ideas than ever before. And I think that's not going to, prob that probably isn't going to go away. And um, it also, again, I, certainly on the level of beauty, I mean, that is where you do see something because you really see, I mean, between people swatching on their arms and talking about different people. Like, I'm really, I'm really conscious of it. And I, you know, and I think that because of the nature of the product and the cost or the price of the product, people can actually you know, buy the product, which is very different when you're talking about a $3,000 dress or a $500 blouse, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite different. So, so there is something that's more accessible about the things that we're making in this, in this area, which, which allow it to become more than just a discussion. So when somebody says, like, I need that nail polish, they actually can go and buy it rather than just say they, say they need it. And when you're creating beauty products, how do you how do you go about creating a product in an ownable way? Well, I, I mean, again, I thought the the team of people that we work with or that I work with, you know, comes and they they sort of they they um, make it real. So you know, when you talk about having a nail polish that's a color but that's kind of transparent because you saw a reference in a '70s magazine, that whatever, or if you have a glitter that's you want the particles to be a certain size so they really sparkle, but they want to make sure that people who wear that eyeshadow don't go blind because the particles get in their eye. <laughs> you know, like, so there's, there's a certain amount of, like I said, creative impulse and whim, and then there's the responsibility. There's also the, the, the sort of passion to push, you know, the people responsible for making these things, the factories or the, the, the companies that make these products, to push them a little bit further to create new formulas and, uh, and everybody, like I said, is on the same page. So there's that active push on every level. Do you like to play with makeup? Yeah, I sit there. I still have little remnants of like this glitter eyeliner on my hand from earlier this afternoon, and I probably have glitter all over somewhere. But <laughs> yeah, I like to play with it. 
And is your process similar when you're developing fragrance? Tell us how you like to work in that way. Well, I mean, I'm going to get killed by Cody, but uh, <laughs> it's way more fun working on makeup than fragrance. Um, I mean, the, the fragrance thing is nice. What's nice about fragrance is, is a story. It's like to think of the, the kind of story or the romantic image of the, the girl, the bottle, or the world of, of that particular, the spirit of that fragrance, and then to try to identify the elements and the communication of it, et cetera. But I think, I think working on, on makeup is definitely closer to the process that and the process that I love of putting together a fashion show. So you are talking about color, you are talking about texture, you are also creating a look with shape, and you're making more creative choices that are visual. And I guess that's, that's really what my thing is, is like visual choices and, you know, design being a series of creative choices and, 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 and creating an identity. And like I said, I, I feel that I get closer to that with makeup and clothing than I do maybe with fragrance. And what about skincare? Well, that's a new thing for us. So we're working on that. And that's been exciting. So we'll see, you know, we'll see where that goes. But, but again, I, I, I think all the, all the rituals that are involved, I mean, I said it a little bit, I guess, in that video, but the ritual of like sort of from the time you wake up and you start, you know, your shower and taking care of yourself and what you do to like, go out to the world and show this person you want other people to see. You know, the choices you make in terms of your shoes and your clothes and your bag and your face and your fragrance, all of those things, I think there's so much pleasure in it. Like these are luxuries, they are not necessity. And I think that more, well, at least I see with so many people, these are things that people really do enjoy. They enjoy picking them out. I mean, I, I've been in Sephora before, where I've just seen like, it's so busy. Mm. And like, the makeup artists are so knowledgeable about what they're selling, and the customer is so anxious to buy something new and try something different. So, so you know, there's just like, I think there is like a whole ritual, social, and expressive sort of aspect to all of these things. Mm -hmm. It makes it exciting. So when you launched your, um, your latest foundation range, you launched with 29 shades, and you had 29 different models to show the 29 different shades. Yes. And I, can you tell us how that idea came about? Um, I think that, that again, was uh, a discussion with Katie Grand, and I, I think, you know, I, I remember there was, there was some comments that I had on Instagram prior to that, to Shameless, where people were saying that we weren't doing enough shades for, for the various skin colors. And I remember, again, going to a meeting and saying, like, you know, guys, I think we need to offer more shades for... And, and again, my, what I had to say was heard, and everybody took it quite seriously. And, and then when we, when we came around to doing this, this um, Shameless um, campaign, it was very important to have a very... Uh, I mean, there were people of different ages, and gender identities, and, um, and, and obviously shades. And I think that was, again, without saying anything, you told the story of, of what Shameless is all about, which is being unapologetically you, you know? And that, that in one word, I mean, it's tattooed over my heart, and that was the name of the foundation. And I think that the people used the cast to express that, just told that story of feeling good about yourself and being who you are, you know? Um, recent, you, you recently also brought on a team of makeup artists, which is unusual for a creative person to is do. It? Well, I think so. I mean, <laughs> in some ways, like for someone with your name and to, to open up the fold, if you will. And I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think I've always think of everything as a collaborative effort. I mean, I don't do anything alone basically. I mean, I have a team of people that I work with on, on fashion, on shoes, on bags, and I feel like everybody, you know, plays a part, and, and um, I mean, I'm not a makeup artist. I love the work of different makeup artists, and I think it's great to have different voices, different visions, different approaches. It's also really, it's really refreshing to give one thing to different people and see how they use it, how they interpret it, and I, you know, I think that's, that's like kind of style rather than fashion, and I think, 
things with style have much more longevity than something that's just the fashion. So, so I think you know, seeing like a particular product in the hands of different people and how they use it and what they do with it is, is just much more interesting. Yeah. So it's decentralizing control almost. Yeah, and, and, and just sort of opening up for, you know, again, like different voices, different visions, different expressions of, of one thing. How connected for you, how do you approach runway beauty? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm usually stressed. <laughs> and, um, I mean, through the, through the process of putting together a collection, we always look at different references or there's different ideas and thoughts. And by the time we get to doing the hair and makeup for the show, the beauty statement, you know, we kind of have a very good idea of what the show will look like and what the girls, what, what, I, what I'd like to say with the show. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we come, you know, we come to that point and we work with Diane and Guido, Diane Kendall and Guido at Palau and um, show them the clothes and talk them through what the different references, the inspirations were, and then we, try different things until we get to a place where we all feel that the balance is right, where, the, where all the bits fit together to tell the complete picture.